Well, howdy folks. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to the workshop. Welcome to another DIY video. Today, we're gonna be building another PVC didgeridoo. Now, if that sounds familiar to you, it's because I did a video about that a while back and I'll go ahead and link that in the description for you. But here is that PVC di didgeridoo that I built. And that video has actually been pretty popular. A lot of comments, a lot of likes on that. So thank you for that. One of the comments that I got on that video was from a fella named Paul in New Zealand. And apparently he knows a heck of a lot more about PVC didgeridoos than I do. And he has more or less perfected the art of building a PVC didgeridoo. So he told me he made a new design and asked if he could send it to me. And of course I said yes. And so Paul did send it to me. I exchanged a few emails with him. Okay, so here is Paul's design and it uses five different diameters of PVC pipe one and a quarter inch, one and a half inch, two inch, three inch, and four inch. Now I'll go ahead and put that diagram on the screen for you so you can read it. And you'll notice that Paul has uh, calculated everything all the way down to 60 fourths of an inch, very accurate. Well, I, prob I will have trouble cutting PVC that accurate. So I converted everything to the closest eighth inch. And um, if you look, I have put the eighth inch dimensions above his dimensions, and then it only changes the overall length by a 64th of an inch. So for all intents and purposes, it should come out the same, but I think it's gonna be a lot easier for me to do. Now, Paul did caution me that he says, usually when he builds these, he uses a formula to figure all this out. And when he builds it, he, he says version one typically is a little off and he has to do a version two to get it just right. And the reason is because you'll notice on the diagram, it doesn't account for the reducers. The reducer, the, you know, the lengths are just pipe to pipe and that reducer does take up some space. So for instance, you can see if you push the pipe even all the way in to the end of this reducer and this one in, you've still got this little slope piece, but realistically that pipe's never gonna go all the way into the reducer. So what I'm gonna do as I calculate these and measure these pipes is I'm going to measure from the center of where the reducing actually happens. So I'll measure from here to that, that same spot on the next reducer and so on and so forth, instead of measuring the pipe itself. That'll make more sense as we go along. But if you look behind me here, I have gathered all of the parts needed to make this here didgeridoo. And what's crazy about this is, this is a piece of scrap I had laying around. It's a one and a quarter inch piece of scrap. This is a one and a half inch piece of scrap I had laying around, a two inch piece of scrap, and a three inch piece of scrap and they're all longer than is needed for this project. So I didn't have to buy any of those. Those I just had. Additionally, I had these two reducers in my box of parts. So all I had to buy were these two reducers and I had to buy a piece of four inch PVC. Now, a warning about that, four inch PVC is fairly pricey. If you buy a 10 foot length or something, it, it gets up there. My local hardware store does sell two foot lengths of the larger PVC, three inch, four inch and such. So I bought a two foot, but even this is you know, a little bit pricey. So if you didn't have any of this on hand, um, this might not be a cost effective project for you. <clears throat> okay, now one thing to note here, depending on your PVC scrap, if it has the actual original end, you might have one already smooth end and one rough end. So if you have an already smooth end, you'll probably want to retain that end and always trim from the other end. But sometimes, depending on the scrap, you might just have two rough ends, in which case, you know, measure from your smoothest one. So what I'm trying to do here is get it so this piece from the end to this mark that I made, hopefully you can see that mark, is 19 and 3 eighths inches. So let's see. just a hair long. It's like about 19 and 5 sixteenths. So I'm going to see if I can push it on just a little farther. That felt like it moved a little bit. Let's see. There we go. 19. I don't know if you can see that, but it is 19 and 3 eighths on the dot. Awesome. Okay, so what we want to do next is measure between these two lines and, oh, oh, that is good. All right, 
So I've already cemented this top one in place. Let's go ahead and cement the, the uh, next one in place. Okay, so we got that cut. So now let's put it together with our existing piece of the didgeridoo here. Push it in there and let's go ahead and measure this so far. And we are looking for 18 and an eighth, I believe. Sorry, I know this is probably hard to see. I'm working with some small, oh my gosh, dead on. It's actually about a 16th long, but I should be able to slide it that much. All right, let's go ahead and cement this one in place. We're getting there. Okay, we are now up to the three inch pipe and I've marked this one and let's go ahead and cut this one. Okay. So let's go ahead and get the Marks lined up, and again, this is the hardest part of this whole thing is all the measuring, but let's see where we're at here. We're looking for 11 and 3 eighths, and we are about 11 and 3 quarters, so yeah, I think I've got some room. It feels like I've got some room to work with here. This is not very far in. So let me go ahead and cement this one in place, and I think we're down to the four inch pipe. All right, let's do a quick sanity check here, folks. This is our didgeridoo so far, and we are just, whoops, <laughs> we are just missing one piece of pipe, the four inch pipe. So you can see this thing is quite long. So some people might say, why are you cementing all of these in place? Because, you know, then you could easily move it later and, you know, change it out or something. Well, that's true, but we are, we've already established an eighth of an inch or even a 64th of an inch can make a difference in tuning. So if you want this thing to actually be in tune, you're gonna have to make sure that these pipes don't move. So that's why I'm cementing them in place. Now I realize when I get done with this one, it might not be in tune because as Paul warned me, sometimes they're a little off on the first try, but still I wanna at least know where I started. So that is why I'm doing that. But now we're down to our final steps. So what we need to do is we need to get this four inch pipe. And since this is the last little stretch, it's kind of hard to calculate how long I need to cut that pipe. So what I did is I actually measured this to make sure it is 24 inches and it is exactly 24 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this pipe in here and I'm going to measure the whole overall thing. And then I'm going to figure out how long, how, how much longer it is than it's supposed to be. And that's how much of the pipe I'm going to trim off. Cause I think that's going to be easier than trying to calculate the length of this pipe. Okay, that was hard to cut, but this here that I'm holding in my hand should be our final piece. So let's clean it up and get the whole thing cemented together. Okay, so here, hopefully I've got enough room. Here is our completed didgeridoo. We've got the four inch section, reducer, three inch section, reducer, two inch section, reducer, one and a half inch section, reducer, and then the one and a quarter inch section. Let's check the overall length. Now, what did I say here? The overall length should be 62 and a half. Let's see where we're at. Woo, right on the money. I mean, they say that PVC cement should dry for two hours uh, to let the fumes dissipate. So I'm gonna need to let this dry because I don't wanna put my mouth on it if there's still toxic fumes in there. So um, let's let this thing sit for a minute. I'll be back. Okay, folks, so here I am with the didgeridoo in the studio. And a couple quick things I wanna just mention. Um, the next thing that I would normally do is finish this, um, but I learned a couple things from the last time when I made this other PVC didgeridoo. So first of all, you'll notice if I turn this, I sanded the logos off and I just used like some 320 grit sandpaper, nothing real crazy. But I sanded the, the most of those logos off. You can see a little bit still, but 
um, like maybe right here. But um, that way it'll make it easier to prime. And also any rough edges on these, I sand it off. So um, I don't have any primer. I'd probably start finishing it today, but I'm gonna need to take another trip to the hardware store to get some primer um, and then I'll paint it or something. So look for another video coming. Um, so now for the next thing, let's see where this ended up. So according to Paul's plan, this should turn out to a perfect E-tone. Now, right over here, I've got a chromatic tuner and realize you can't see it, so it's out of the frame, but I'm gonna try to blow through this, get a good solid drone note going and see how the tuner registers it, so. Okay, I'm not mad about that. Um, so it's coming up just a little bit sharp of an E. Um, like once in a while the, the tuner would kind of bounce to an F and then it would be really flat on the F and then it would bounce back to an E and then it would kind of sit up right just a little bit high of an E. But I'm not mad about that because that's actually kind of fortunate because I'm not crazy about this mouthpiece because it's just kind of the edge of the PVC. So I was thinking, what if I could put like a little fitting on there just to make that a little smoother and you know, a little nicer to blow into. Well, that's gonna extend it just slightly and it might be just enough to make it a perfect E. So um, that's actually kind of fortuitous, but even if like, it's not off in such a way that I would consider this a failure, it's pretty darn close. Uh, Paul's plan worked. Here is our five section four reducer didgeridoo. Again, I'll put the um, diagram on the screen for you so you can take a look and see the dimensions that I use. And if you wanna recreate this, then you can expect to come up with a didgeridoo in E. So I hope you like this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up for me. And if you like my video, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe. Look for another video where I go ahead and finish this baby. That's coming soon. See you then.